Hey, it's my aircraft! Hey friends, let's practice some crosswind landings today in the 737-800. It's a great airplane to land in a crosswind, especially with the classic wing down technique. Those are the prettiest crosswind landings I've done right, but it takes a while to get a really good feel for how to do it right. And as everything is in the sim, it's much harder to do in the simulator than in real life. I will gradually increase the crosswind velocity. The runway track is 183 and I'll start with 090 degrees at 10 knots, then increase to 15, then 20, 25, and lastly, 33 knots, which is the maximum demonstrated crosswind component for 737-800. We'll discuss more what that means exactly. And this is a 20 knot crosswind takeoff, maintaining the center line with the rudder and applying left roll inputs to keep the wings level. The hardest part is to maintain wings level just after the lift off, as you are gently releasing the rudder pressure, slowly and simultaneously center the yoke. And here we go, that's the first one. Runway 18 right in Schiphol, Amsterdam, 10 knots direct crosswind. Notice I'm starting to add a little bit of a left bank. Start the flare thrust idle. 10 feet radio altitude, this is my position in the flare, just before I'm going to start applying the right rudder. Note the magnetic track readout 181 degrees. That's a 2 degree offset of the runway centerline. My goal is to bring it to 183, which is the runway track, and I do that with the rudder. I know that the second I touch the right rudder, my left wing is going to want to come up. The right yaw motion will add additional lift to my left wing that I don't want. And this is exactly why I've been focusing on that slight left bank in anticipation of that yaw motion. Let's see what happens. Gently adding the right rudder. And you see how that right wing dropped on me all of a sudden. So I'm adding even more left roll input. Watch my yoke. Touched down with the left wheel but didn't stay on it for too long. And the longer I keep the other wheel from touching down, the easier it is for me to keep the airplane from drifting while the airspeed dissipates. You'll see that on the replay. As soon as the right wheel touched down, the airplane drifted slightly downwind of the centerline. Here we go, there's the flare, there's the left bank, there comes the rudder. The right wing drops, I'm increasing the left bank. Left wheel touches down, I'm adding more left bank to prevent drifting. Right wheel drops and there's the immediate drift. And I didn't drift much because the crosswind velocity is only 10 knots. And also because I was able to drop about 15 knots of airspeed before I ran out of lift while balancing on one wheel. So the motion vector was less than it would have been had I touched down with both wheels at the same time. Watch that initial touchdown again. See how the airplane wanted to drift for an instant, but I didn't let it because I had more maneuverability while balancing on one gear. And that's the advantage of the wing down crosswind landing technique. Same thing in slow motion. Rudder, right wing drops. I respond by increasing the left roll input. The left wheels touch down, the airplane wants to drift right, but I'm not letting it by adding a little more left bank. As the inevitable touchdown of the right wheels, and here comes the drift. Once the nose wheel comes down, Direction control becomes really tricky, because the tiller inputs in the sim are linked to the yaw axis for some reason. In real life you don't touch the tiller until you get to 30 knots tops, so don't judge me too harsh on this one. And here's 15 knots direct crosswind. Five more knots that will try to push me off the center line. 50, 40. Little left bank, idle thrust, flare, right rudder, more left bank. Left main touches, and the right main touches as well, and we are drifting. See, my yoke was in the full left deflection since just before the left main touched down. Yet still I couldn't stay on the left wheel for longer than a second. Well, that means that there was either not enough airspeed to keep the right wing lifted, or, which is more likely, I overdid it with the right rudder. Too much right rudder means more lift on the left wing, and not enough lift on the right wing, so the second main gear dropped too early. Here you can actually see it, the nose is pointing to the right of the center line. And we definitely don't want that. The wind is already pushing us there, why would we want to add to that? It's a difficult little dance and it's different every time. And that's why I love crosswind landings. See that initial left main touchdown was good, but there was too much right rudder to stay on one wheel long enough. I think I'm gonna have to redo this one. What do you think? Same thing, 15 knots direct left crosswind. So I get the best results in crosswinds when I manage to respond with the rudder to my roll inputs. That is, as opposed to leading with the rudder and reacting with rolling the airplane. And here I did it just right. I kept the roll input and controlled the bank angle with dancing gently on the right rudder. Honestly, I'm not expecting you to see it really, because it's the skill that takes years to develop. But that's how you do it. 
Let's look at it again from the outside. Here we go, holding that left bank and stepping gently on the right rudder to control that bank. More rudder, less bank. Less rudder, more bank. Not ideal, but pretty good. Could have had just a little less right rudder to stay on the left wheel a second longer. Ended up drifting a bit as a result, but that's nitpicking. Let's look from this angle now. Yeah, you could see how the nose pointed to the wrong side of the center line momentarily, maybe by a half a degree. But there was a very light drift. The left main ended up never crossing the center line. What do you say? Do you think I'm ready to tackle the 20 knot crosswind? Let's give it a go. All right, 20 knots, here we go. So the same strategy. I'm going to establish the left bank in the flare. I'm going to try to control it to the best of my ability with the right rudder. Left main touch, holding the bank, holding the bank. Nice. Yeah, I think that was spot on, if I don't say so myself. I think I stayed on the left main for a couple of seconds at least. Let's take a look from the outside. Looks like I'm entering the flare with a little both, roll and yaw. Left main touch with the nose pointing a little bit to the left of the center line, that's good. Just a perfect amount of rudder, right main touch, and there's very little resulting drift. In fact, the left main gear never as much as touched the center line, and neither did the right one. And that's 20 knot direct crosswind, mind you. And I stayed on the left main for nearly 3 seconds, I actually timed it in my video editor. And let's look from the other angle. Now I gotta say, 20 knot crosswind is my sweet spot. With less than that, there's a tendency to overcorrect with the rudder, as you just saw with my first 15 knot attempt. With more than 20, and the higher it goes, the worse it gets, the bank angle that's required to counteract the rudder input starts to be a little too dicey. I'll talk more on that in a moment. But when it's around 20 knots crosswind, I seem to always apply just the right amount of force to the right pedals. And it always works. Alright, time for 25 knots. So, the higher the crosswind velocity is, the more initial crab is required on the final. The greater the crab angle is, the more rudder will be required to align the airplane with the center line during flare. And the more rudder you need, the more opposite bank angle you will need as well. That is if you're landing with a wing down technique also known as side slip landing. But there are limits to how far you can pitch and bank before you start scraping things against the pavement. Let's say in the 737-800, the flap track fairing will touch the runway at 7 degrees of pitch and 13 degrees of bank. Let's see where I was when I touched down. Can't see the PFD because of the yoke, but let's look at the standby attitude indicator. 7.5 degrees of pitch and 8 degrees of bank. So about 5 degrees of margin, just a little under. That's a good margin but that's probably as far as I'd be willing to go. Which means if there is a stronger crosswind, I would have to start adjusting my technique. That was a fairly decent landing, by the way, what do you say? Ended up on the upwind side of the center line, which is an indicator that I didn't have enough right rudder. But remember, more rudder, more opposite bank needed. And I wouldn't have wanted to increase the bank angle that I had any further. So that was a compromise. It's a blended technique. Half side slip, half decrab post touchdown. So, what are the ultimate limits? While the maximum demonstrated crosswind on the dry runway in the 737-800 is 33 knots. That's with the traditional winglet, not sure what it would be with the newer, fancy one. That means that if you attempt to land with a stronger crosswind than that, you have three options. You'll either scrape something, you'll overstress the main gear with side loads exerted during the post-touchdown drift, or you will depart the runway off its side. Your choice. And on that note, let's try 33 knots crosswind. Here we go. But hang on a second. Hmm? Say what? Oh well, not sure what that was. Crazy Dutch. Alright, focus, focus, focus. Not too much bank, not too much rudder. Need a good balance here. Alright, looking good, looking good. Flare, idle thrust. Left bank, right rudder. Ooh, the wing drop. That's 10 degrees bank. That was not pretty. Let's see from the outside. Alright, it's looking good so far. Let's see what I did wrong. I think I just didn't flare enough. 
I only had about 5 degrees of pitch at touchdown, which isn't too bad normally, but then I decided to add more left bank. That lowered the nose and the airplane just dropped uncontrollably. Let's try it again. Much better flare. Holding it, holding it. Touchdown. It looks like I touched down with both wheels at the same time, so in a crab. And starting to drift upwind of the center line, which actually happens because of the high crosswind velocity. The wind is hitting the vertical stabilizer and the airplane weather veins back into the wind. And I didn't have enough rudder authority. I had full rudder deflection, but not enough rudder to get back to the center line. As I was slowing down, the stabilizer became less aerodynamically effective, and I was gradually able to steer the airplane better. Here we go, another attempt. Better flare. And touchdown pretty much in crab. Looks like in this one I didn't even fight to keep the airplane on the center line and allowed it to drift upwind. But this is still better than decrabbing in the air and then touching down with wings level. You will then immediately be pushed downwind of the center line, which is much harder to correct and much more disconcerting for the passengers sitting in the back. This is the same landing. See how right up to touchdown I pretty much allowed the airplane to travel on the offset ground track for a second or two before starting to correct back to the center line. Not a pretty landing from this angle, but definitely a safe one. Really took it easy on those torkling dampers on the mains. I'll remind you, it's 33 knots direct crosswind. Alright, I'll be honest with you, I tried about 20 times, and this is probably the best one. Looks pretty much textbook from the cockpit. Not too bad on the outside either. Couldn't avoid touching down in crab, but look, my yoke is full deflection to the left already, and I still couldn't keep my left wing down. Also, see how the airplane is leaning right a bit? That happens because the right rudder application is generating a lifting force that translates into clockwise rotational moment around the vertical axis. This in turn elevates the left wing, because it still generates some lift, and lowers the right wing, which compresses the right main gear strut and makes the airplane kind of list to the right, noticeably. You can see that clearly on the outside view. It's visible throughout the entire rollout. As I'm applying the right rudder, the airplane leans heavily into the right main gear. There's just no way to avoid that in strong crosswinds. The landing gear is designed to withhold that additional load, of course. One last time from the opposite angle. Remember that at touchdown, I had full left yoke deflection. Yet I still touched down with wings basically level and still couldn't track the center line precisely. And that's why we have crosswind limits for each type of airplane. Next time I'll show you how crosswind landings are done in the A320. That thing is a pain in the butt to handle in strong crosswinds and you never feel fully in control and I'll explain why. But let's finish with looking one more time at my 20 knot crosswind attempt. As I mentioned, I love 20 knot crosswinds because how the airplane is ideally controllable in a 20 knot crosswind. And you can see the result right here, a landing that I just can't stop replaying. So thanks for watching and feel free to like and subscribe as you deplane.